relationships which can be used for the design of for irrigation system. We we'll look at another aspect uh, of uh, the system design. Let's put a question to ourselves that what's the guarantee that the parameters which you have obtained from those relationships are those the valid parameters when you will be applying those parameters in the field. So quite often it is required that we should check those parameters and try to uh, define some procedure by which you can check those parameters. We had seen that in the case of water irrigation design also that we had gone in further the field trials or field evaluation. Similarly, in this case also, we can adopt a similar procedure to uh, check those parameters which we have obtained, whether those parameters are close to the parameters which you actually obtained through the field trials. If they are, well and good. If they are not, then you will have to revise some of those parameters depending on what are the actual conditions. Because many a time, what is the reason behind? If you look at the reason behind, you are trying to use the relationships which, which represent the conditions in the field. So that representation, if it is faulty or if it is not uh, is always dependent on some observations which you have made at some discrete points in the, the field. If those are not proper, then uh, you might get some, some parameters which are not representative parameters. Because many a times you might be, you might be basing all your uh, uh, criteria on the, the infiltration uh, observations which you have made. Those observations, they belong to certain point locations in the field. So when you do the trial run, you will be able to verify those parameters. So let's have a look at uh, uh, the field trial verification procedures. of uh, some of the design parameters. In the case of for irrigation, the first thing which you want to find out is that what is the maximum stream size which should be taken and you have used this relationship to find out that Q maximum. Now, having obtained this Q maximum, now you set up a, a length in the field which is a representative length of the, the furrow field and select around four to five furrows. So for example, if you have, uh, this is your uh, total field having different furrows, you can select some segment, maybe somewhere here, where you can, uh, you have there's the upstream end, there's the downstream end where you are making the measurements and then you select some of the furrows. So you have, you have selected a representative segment of the, the total field and this segment is a portion of the field where you will be making the observations so, so as to check the various design parameters. Now the Q maximum which we have obtained, so let us assume that you have uh, selected four furrows and you 
power at q maximum, which you know, which is a desirable stream size, which you have obtained from the relationship. Now, select four different stream sizes in such a way that some of them are more than Q maxima and some of them are less than the Q maximum value. The one which is less, you try to select one out of this which hardly, uh, which may not be able to even reach the, the downstream end of the field. So, it is so low. You are, you are trying to select those stream sizes which are extreme stream, stream sizes. The one which is very low and on this side you might select one which is uh, definitely erosive. So, as to have a range of these stream sizes, because you want to, you want to make the observations that how the, the movement of water will behave with respect to these different ranges of the stream size. So, once you have selected the stream sizes, you make the observations. The observations are only made in terms of the elapsed time. But how the waterfront moves from the upstream end of the furrow to the downstream end. So, you plot these with respect to the distance. Down the furrow, this is in meters, this is in minutes. Depending on what sizes you have uh, selected, you might find that you are, once you plot those, you will get a, a family of these advanced curves. belong to different uh, uh, stream sizes. For example, this is, uh, if you take this as the you might now be able to observe one if you have many of them you might out of these you might know that which is the one which is the maximum allowable stream size as you want to select one which is non erosive okay that you can call as the maximum allowable stream size here you will have all these stream sizes will be uh, this will be more than Q maximum if we call this as the Q maximum. Now, you can also match that whether the Q maximum which you have obtained from the relationship, from the empirical relationship, does it match with the allowable maximum as per the field conditions or not. So that is the first check. So, if you find that that maximum allowable is different, choose that as the maximum allowable. And the others now, these are the sizes which are uh, greater than Q maximum and they will be, they will be creating erosion uh, uh, in the field. And on this side of the, this maximum allowable, these are the stream sizes which are less than Q maximum and they are uh, non-erosive. 
at the same time, they are of course non-erosive, but we have seen that to have less of depercolation, you should try to have the maximum stream size. The FR ratio which we have seen, we can, we have seen the justification. Now, having obtained this family of the curves, now this family of curve is with respect to a non slope and uh, non q values. You can always use a iterative procedure to find out what is the, the length to be adopted and what is the corresponding time of advance. show you the, the, how you do the, use the iteration to find out which are the proper parameters. Let us take one uh, uh, case where you have been given, the given data is that Q maximum is 0.4 liters per second, the slope of the field is also given and the family curve or the properties of the soil in terms of the family curve is known. So once the family curve is known, you know all the, the coefficients A, B and C. So now as a first trial, you have to make trial runs, assume a length of the field, let us say we assume 100 meter length, let us call this as the first trial. You can evaluate beta since we know the values of uh, all these parameters. G is known since the family curve is known. And, uh, X is 100 meters, that is what we have taken as the segment of the length. So, X is basically uh, the length of the field considered. There is a value of G with respect to the family curve into 100 meters and Q is known to be 4 liters per second, 0005 to the power 0.5 and this is 2.13. Now with this beta, you can find out what is the advance time. <coughs> I will call it T1 because this is the first trial. This is given as all these relationships we have seen earlier. So, this will, this will evaluate to be into exponent of beta is 2.13. This is 110 minutes. Now, having found this advance time, let me let me assume that once once I have uh, found out the the stream size. 
if the stream size is 0.4, I have taken this stream size to be, I have chosen these stream sizes for which the family curves have been plotted and these belong to these values. Point 0.15 liters per second, point 0.3, point 0.45, point 0.6. Okay. So let's uh, let's assume that these belong to the the given case which we have just taken, and let's give some values to the distance. So on. I am mean, just trying to sketch it in a rough manner. And the time, uh, elapsed time is from 0 to 500 minutes. Now, in the first case, when I, I found that the, the advanced time is 110 minutes. So, for that case, I find out for this advanced time and the distance I know, the distance taken is 100 meters. If this is the 100 meter distance here, I try to project it and if this belongs to 110, 110 minutes, I find that this point lies much below the, the maximum uh, allowable stream size and this point with respect to these two parameters, if I take 100 meters as the length of the field and for which the advanced time with respect to the given parameters is 110 minutes, then this uh, a uh, point lies below this, the maximum allowable, which suggests that if you use these parameters, you are going to get the erosive conditions. So that means either the length is not proper or since length is dependent on the advanced time or the advanced time is dependent on the length is the either way, they are both interconnected. So, I can take another length as a second trial. That means this particular uh, condition is not acceptable. I take the second trial and assume a length which is, which is uh, larger than the previous case. Take a length of 100. 40 meters. Now, for 140 meters length, beta gets evaluated to uh, sorry, 2.98, and the corresponding advanced time is 362 minutes. Again, if I get back to this, for 140. For 140 meter, I project a vertical line from here, and on this side, the elapsed time is 300 something, 362. If this is the point here for 362, I project it, and you are getting a point which is slightly above the the maximum discharge uh, curve, the maximum allowable discharge curve. So this shows that we have achieved a condition now with respect to these two length of 140 and uh, the, the resultant advanced time is 362 minutes. So this gives you a condition 
where you can you will have a situation where the erosion is not a problem but you might be getting efficiency which is not as much as achievable is not a optimum efficiency the optimum efficiency you'll get when you'll when you you'll be able to closer to the maximum allowable stream size so you can if you feel that you have come quite close to this with the respect to these parameters is fine otherwise you can have another trial where you can still improve upon take a third trial where you improve upon the length and you feel that you have taken a length which is more than the desirable you can take it to be uh, less than the previous case and have another iteration where this case beta is 2.66 and the advance time works out to be 235 minutes now this advance time versus the length uh, combination it falls quite close to the the q maximum and now you can you can say that you have achieved a situation which is desirable and at this at this juncture you now compare the parameters which you have obtained here with respect to the parameters which you have obtained by the the other uh, the uh, the equations which have been provided and that comparison will give you a insight into whether the results which you obtained through the the procedural steps using the procedure which you have studied in the last uh, class how close they are to the actual conditions so if they are very far they are far apart you might have to make some adjustments so once in a way is always better to keep track of these uh, um, these parameters and vet those parameters try to check those parameters don't keep on blindly using those parameters that is the main main reason of having these uh, trial uh, uh, evaluation runs for different systems we have seen in the case of border and this also even in uh, similarly in the case of level base in which you are going to consider next the procedures remain same only the expressions the way you have to conduct the, the trial runs they will change okay so with that we conclude this uh, topic on the the furrow irrigation system and we'll move on to the the next topic which is the topic of level basin system if you have any question i can answer that this juncture we won't spend much time on the level basin system because as quite same uh, procedures as we have done in the case of border irrigation system only with very small minor differences and i'll quickly go through this uh, but the subject the topic which is uh, a related topic and uh, try to bring out those differences which are uh, considered in the the evaluation and the design of this level basin system if you remember we have uh, discussed earlier that the level basin is a special case of the border only difference is the the level basin they are not having any slope they are level areas without uh, slope there 
relatively small in size. And what you are doing, uh, the suitability in terms of the suitability, they are suitable for uh, low to moderate intake soils. So for those soils where the infiltration rates are relatively lower, you can use, you can make use of this system. The shapes of the fields are normally rectangular, but the sizes are not, the lengths are not as big as you have in the case of border irrigation. Because of the fact that you are trying to flood these areas, Now, the reason is that you want to do the flooding in these small uh, basins so that you can let the water stand for a long period so as to have the, the available infiltration opportunity time to be there so as to have the, the desired, uh, desired uh, infiltration take place in the field because we have just said that the the infiltration rates of these soils are very low. If you let the water pass over the surface of the soil, the amount of time which is available for the infiltration is very small. And since the infiltration rates are very low, it needs a very long time for infiltration. So that is the reason that the, the shape of the basin and the size of the basin has been reduced. The, the slopes are not given so that you can flood the area, you can check the water within the area. That is the idea. If you create slopes, then you will find that uh, the lower portions of the, let me elaborate this point, that if I have a field which is having slope, if you want to supply a depth of water and you try to trap this water, it will get accumulated only into the lower area. So you have to have a, a relatively um, level surface on which you can, now you can establish a depth of water and the depth of water will depend on what is the ridge size, what is the height of the ridge which you have created in uh, creating these, these basins. We will we'll come to that, that is also a parameter which has to be considered in the designs. So this particular method from that angle is, is created for some special purpose or some special circumstances, but with respect to the, the type of crops which can be grown, we have already considered that in this particular uh, method, in the check basin method or the level basin method, the crops, there is hardly any crop which cannot be grown in this. Even those crops which are not suitable uh, to be grown with any other method, for example, the rice or the, the jute, which need the water, inundated water, which need the standing water, they also are, uh, are used with this method. Others, all the other methods, even the orchards, they are also irrigated using this method where you are uh, creating uh, the conditions where you are taking care of each individual plant by having a ring method which you had considered. So we have discussed that earlier also and uh, let's, let's at this juncture try to look into the various uh, uh, formulations which have been considered for the design of these systems. In this case also as we have uh, seen in the previous uh, cases that there are some 
relationships which are based on experience and the, the even the field trials and these relationships are ultimately given the form of a very simple chart which becomes the starting uh, um, the starting parameters of the design you can always use them as the the thumb rules or as the the values which are recommended values so in this case there's one they are, they are presented in different different uh, uh, forms in one form which I am trying to express here is the chart given in terms of the flow rate in liters per second and for different soil type the soil type vary from sand to sandy loam to clay loam so clay and you are given the area of the basin and hectares for different forage and for different soils. So, I will only pick up some of the values for some in intermediate uh, stream sizes and give you the variation that how much variation in size can take place which is the recommended sizes for all these different types of soils. Let me say that this is two seventy. you can see the variation when you have very small stream size within the same uh, the same stream size when you go from one extreme of the soil type to the other extreme the area can vary by around uh, uh, 10 times same is true in this case also and for different stream sizes for the same soil uh, there is still lot of variation in the, the area which can be used for the level basin. Besides this, this, this will give you a, a reasonably good starting parameters of the, the design, but you can always, if you have more data available, you can go in for the detailed design, which is dependent on the hydraulic relationships which we have been using for other methods, the, the relationships basically used in this, uh, these designs are the soil characteristics which we have uh, seen and uh, the Manning's uh, uh, equation which have been used very often because with the assumption that the, we are considering a channel flow which is a very wide channel with a very small depth. So that is the assumption made uh, because basically the Manning's equation is for channel flow. So let us look at the hydraulic relations. Which we can use for the case of uh, level basin. This equation is still valid for the net depth of infiltration which is which we have used very
very often. So using this equation you can always get the time of infiltration to have this much net depth of infiltration. What is the, the desirable time of infiltration can be obtained from the same relationship. Now once we have this Tn available, now we use the FAR, the fractional advance ratio and the fractional advance ratio is given for basically the FAR, the way we have defined is the ratio of advance time by the net time. The FAR varies with respect to the, the distribution pattern efficiency or you can also say that the distribution pattern efficiency is dependent on FAR and for different distribution pattern efficiencies, FAR value has been computed and given in this table. Similarly, for other efficiencies, you have now this is something which is available either in this form or even in a graphical representation is one and the same thing. Even there is a there is an equation which is available to uh, find out the distribution pattern efficiency, knowing the FAR, and this equation is a is a regression equation, so you can uh, make note of. T by Tn to the power 0.5. This is 0.5 here, where Ed is n percentage as in this. Now, once you Either know your uh, Tn to the power 0.5. I'm sorry, is uh, I'll, I'll write with this. Is it visible now? Now, there can be different uh, situations. In one case, you might select an ED that you want to, you do not want to have a distribution uh, pattern efficiency below a particular level. So, in that case, you fix your ED and you can find out what will be the, the FAR possible for that ED. So, if that is the situation, then uh, you know your FAR. If FAR is known, you can you can know the FAR or in other words you know this ratio this you can uh, uh, find out from the table depending on the acceptable distribution pattern efficiency once you know this you can now evaluate TT because 
Tn is known. Tn is known, and uh, the Fr is known. Okay. So knowing the Fr. the advance time can also be evaluated. Then there is a relationship between uh, the, the time of advance and the length and the stream size. Now, in this case, let me tell you that uh, the stream size which we use is not the stream size uh, uh, for the total strip. We use per unit strip. So, it is a unit stream size which you can say is the Q divided by the width of the, the basin and this will be in meter cube per second per meter width. Half meter square per second. That is what we call the unit stream size. And this length is given in terms of the unit stream size and the advance time and the other parameters of uh, the family curve. expression which is used to find out the length of the uh, basin. And in this, the n value, n value is the same as we had uh, used for the border irrigation system. I had given you the three n values which are representative of three conditions. This, val this value was for smooth bare soil surface. Point 0.1 is taken as the when, the when you have small grain drill uh, rows parallel to the border strip. And if you have a dense crop or when the rows are drills across the border strip, then you have more resistance, the n value is 0.25. The same n values or similar n values are chosen for, uh, if there is a similar situation, the, the difference is not much. The only difference is that you have uh, the flat areas. And besides this, you will also be interested in knowing what is the cutoff time the time to cut off, which we are calling as TCO, and the relationship used for the time to cut off these quantities you are now quite uh, aware of. There is a unit stream size, there is a distribution pattern efficiency, the length and the net depth of infiltration 
and this the EA is assumed to be 100 percent the application efficiency so if the application efficiency is assumed to be 100 percent then this is the expression otherwise if the application efficiency is less than 100 percent this is normally not the case in the case of surface irrigation systems but if it is if you are certain that is not 100 percent then you can use the expression which is giving EA also that will be the revised expression if uh, your EA is not 100 percent. Then lastly we are also interested in knowing that what is the maximum depth of uh, flow and the basin. This maximum depth of flow in the basin is to find out the requirement of the ridge and normally the ridge size is approximately 1.25 times the D maximum if we call this maximum depth as D maximum. So, you can compute the D maximum using this expression. expression used for obtaining the D maximum and D maximum will be in millimeters. Now here there is one uh, um, requirement that there might be a situation when the advance time is more than the cutoff time. Now if, if that is the situation which can which can only happen in the case of uh, level basins. So, if that is the situation then you must in this equation of T max you must replace T C O with T T. So, in this expression which is for uh, um, and the max expression. Okay. That you will have to take care that if your uh, time of advances happens to be more than the, the time of uh, cutoff then this will be the governing time to compute the D maximum which is quite understandable. So, that is what uh, gives us all the parameters which we are interested in and similarly in this case also you can go in for the trial runs and uh, check the parameters as we have uh, suggested in the previous two cases. So, with that uh, I will conclude the, the topic of irrigation methods using the surface irrigation or the gravity irrigation flow. And then in the next uh, class, we will proceed with the, the design of other two methods, 
sprinkler irrigation and the drip irrigation system. Okay. Any question you want to uh, ask at this juncture? Uh, the question is that uh, is there any thumb rule for the basin method? The thumb rule in terms of this is the table which we have uh, just looked at. Uh, I had given you some values of that table. That was basically a thumb rule. Uh, it can be converted into a thumb rule in the sense that uh, this thumb rule, all the thumb rules which you normally uh, formulate, they are having a lot of experience behind them. So this can be taken as a thumb rule where uh, if you know the stream size because normally what parameters are available to you? The constraints, the constraint parameters are the quantity of uh, stream size or the rate of stream size which is uh, the stream size which is available to a farmer at a particular location. If that is known and he also know in general what are the, the type of uh, soil which are prevalent there in that field. Then he can use this as a thumb rule that what is the size of the, the basin which he should uh, adopt so as to get a reasonably good efficiency. So this is, this is nothing but a thumb rule, it can be taken as a thumb rule. Okay. Thank you.